Well, I want to welcome you back to the 11th hour today. Well, we were here at the 11th hour, and we've been here this whole time. You know, I, I believe that this program was tried to be hindered today because of the content of it. And um, once again, I want to thank all of our partners for staying with us. You are absolutely the best. There's just no doubt about it. All around the world. And um, you were loved here and you're prayed for here at, um, at this ministry. Amen. Well, I want to, uh, before we do this, let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord God, that your word is all powerful, almighty, that you have not held back anything from us, Lord, that you have given us full, full, Lord disclosure of what we need to know you have you have opened your word to us and lord i ask you today to give us eyes to see and ears to hear that we can learn your word together as a family in jesus name amen amen you know um, in matthew 24 24 this is what the scripture says it says for there shall arise false christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it was possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Now, in Second Thessalonians chapter two, verses seven through nine, it says that it will be lying wonders. Now, you know, I uh, the Lord started talking to me about this, and. Um, I want to take you back to a prophecy in Genesis chapter three that the Lord himself gave. The Lord himself gave this prophecy. Now, this is this is so powerful. I want you to, to really catch hold of this. If you got your physical Bible with you, underline it, underline this and maybe make notes on something so that you remember this. In Genesis 3:15, the Lord himself said to the serpent. He said, I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. And it, her seed, shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. This was a prophecy. Think about it. It was a prophecy not only of the crucifixion to come when the seed of the woman, Jesus, would step on the head of the serpent. But it's also a prophecy that reveals some very important insight to us. And the insight is this. Look at this now. It says, and it, he said, I shall put enmity or war between you and the woman and between thy seed. So the Lord revealed to us that the serpent has a seed, that there is a seed here that, that, the, uh, that the woman's seed will do battle with. This is actually in this prophecy of an, an eye-opening revelation that the serpent had a seed. Now, we have to start looking at where that seed was and where it is now. And this is what I believe the Lord wanted this program to be about. He started talking to me about it yesterday. And then I think that's why we fought everything we did today. Now, I want you to go over to Isaiah chapter 14. And I want us to look at that now. We've got to locate the serpent seed, how it got here, and where it is now. And you're about to learn why all this political upheaval is going on around the world. Now, I'm in a location that nobody knows where I'm at right now. And um, uh, we're going through the fortress, but I'm coming to you live. This is live. Now, the praise and worship wasn't live, but this is live right now. I'm talking to you. Now, I want you to see this. In Isaiah 14, verse 12, it says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Now, what you're actually looking at is a song. 
This is a song. You say, well, how do we know that? I want to tell you a story now. In the world before Adam was created, there, when God got ready to create, he, he, was, he created this whole wonderful, beautiful place the heavens and the earth, Genesis 1 declares. And so when he got everything created, he anointed a certain angelic being, a certain angel named Lucifer, which was the light bearer. He anointed him. Now, he's called here the son of the morning. Now, this gives you a clue as to who he is. Jesus is called the bright and morning star. And Lucifer's called the son of the morning. In other words, he was Jesus' personal angel. He was the word's personal angel. <clears throat> That's why he was anointed to bring the revelations to the earth. Now, Ezekiel 28 will be a reference you're going to want. In Ezekiel 28, it talks about this. It says there are stones of fire that, that, uh, that this uh, this angel walked up and down in the stones of fire. And what that is, is it's the revelations of God. These stones of fire are revelation stones, revelation knowledge. And this angelic being who was anointed with the anointing uh, to walk up and down in these stones of fire and find certain revelations. Now, the scripture says in Ezekiel 28 that he had Instead of a heart, he had tambourines built into his being. He didn't have a heart. He had a timbrels that was built inside him. He had these shofars of these pipes that came from his body. And he was a living instrument. He was a living instrument because it had to be done in frequencies, harmonies. All of this, this had to be established through sound and light. And so the light bearer would go up and down and find a revelation. And he would come to the earth and lift himself up to the center of the earth. And when he did, these tambourines would begin to play out a beat inside his body. And these shofars would sound with the sounds of frequencies and music. And in those days, there were thin metallic plates that went all the way around the earth, that if a sound hit those plates, it would carry all the way around the earth and it would carry that sound. And he would sing prophetically the revelation he had found in the stones of fire. And when he would do this, then it would begin to be established in the earth. It would match the frequencies in the planet and, and all of these frequencies and sounds, he would match them and go inside those sounds with these prophetic songs and the word of God would start to bring forth. And Jeremiah 4 says there were, there were fruitful places. There were cities that were built. There were uh, mountains. There were birds. But there was no man. There wasn't a man. This was a time before the man. And then one day when this light bearer would, was this, this living instrument, prophetic, angelic being, anointed with this prophetic anointing, because the scripture says the word, Jesus, created all things. And so he was there in the beginning uh, after the earth was created, taking the word him, from him, the word himself, and singing the revelation. And it would create, and it would establish, and it would bring forth. Well, the day came, he's walking up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. And when he did, he saw the revelation, the next one he was to bring forth, the next one he was to take inside himself and lift himself up to the center of the earth and begin to sing this revelation was the song of the man that was coming. It was the song of the man. And when he did, he saw this song. And listen, and you can find out what the song was all about. It was the song. It says, it was in this where he said, you said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. It was the song of God's family <clears throat> and their ability to come. He was to sing up into the heaven so the whole creation could hear it. 
that they will be able to, man will ascend into heaven. He will be able to exalt his authority above the angels, the stars of God. He was going to be above angels and below God. And he saw this and he would be able to sit in the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north beside God. He was God's family, God's son. God was creating a family. And then he says this, he said uh, he would be able to ascend above the heights of the clouds, not just stay on the earth, but he would be able to go up above the clouds and visit God. And God could come to the earth and visit him. And when he saw what kind he would be, watch now, look at this in verse 14 of Isaiah uh, 14. I will be like the most high. The song was to continue and all of this. And then he would sing. I will be like, or they will be like the most high as saying what they will be in his image, in his likeness, in his image, in his likeness. And some of these Hebrew words here where it talks about throne and all of this in here, some of the Hebrew meanings is this, get this flesh, flesh pots, flesh covered crimson. It was talking about the man. It was the song of the man. And when that angel saw the song of the man, the fruitful places were was prepared. The, the cities were prepared. The birds were here. Everything was beautiful, ready for the man to come. And when it came time to sing the song of the man, and he saw his position, he couldn't stand it. And Ezekiel 28 talks to us about how it filled him with violence. It filled him with violence. And then we find the eighth Psalm, how he went and he went to the court of Jehovah, the court of heaven, and he protested against the man. I hope you're listening to me today. I want to get this across. This is so powerful because you're about to find out where we are. In the eighth Psalm, and we know this is an angel talking because Hebrews 2 quotes the eighth Psalm but says it was an angel speaking, an angel testify, or the Greek says earnestly protesting. He's in the court of Jehovah. When he found this song, he said, oh, Jehovah, that's the word Lord there, our master, how excellent is your name or your authority in all the earth who has set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. He's talking about a man. He said, out of the mouth of babes. He said, I see that, that this creature is going to, you're going to visit him. You've ordained strength in his mouth that by the time his offspring can suck the breast, they can make a sound that will stop your enemies in their tracks and stop a bad harvest from coming. The avenger. He said, what is this? He said, when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you've ordained. And then you see why he's protesting. What is man that thou art mindful of him or the son of man that you would visit him? You made him a little lower than the angels. And that word angel there is the word God. He said, you've made him a little lower than God. And has crowned him with glory and honor. And you made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You've have you put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, yea, and the beast of the field, and the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the paths of the sea. And then he closed the court case with this. O Jehovah, our master, how excellent is your authority in all the earth. He protested. When he found that song. And then when it came time to sing the song. And he knew he had to sing this song. Folks, you've got to listen to me. Now I'm giving you some kind of spiritual insight. That I, I mean this is, this is strong. When it came time for him to sing the song. He lifted himself up. To the center of the earth. He was ready. The music started playing. The timbrels begin to beat. Everything began to happen. 
The creation was ready. Couldn't you see them? The creation was ready to listen to the sweet voice as God was about to give his next revelation through the song that would resonate through the earth. All the molecules, all the atoms, all the electrons, everything. And you know, it's amazing when you begin to think about it, how, how uh, the electrons and things like that don't really show up and respond until a man looks at them. And then they show up all at once. They were ready. Everything set their ears to hear, their eyes to see. Ready. Can you see them? Can you see the creation? It's ready. Even on the levels of atoms and so forth, everything's ready. And they're sitting there. And Lucifer, the son of the morning, opened his mouth. And what would have normally been a beautiful voice to sing this song. For man will ascend into, into uh, heaven. He will exalt his throne above the stars, the angels of God. He will have this. He will be this. What came out of his mouth was vanity. The song was anointed. The revelation was real. The tune was ready. The earth was ready. And then all at once, Lucifer turned the song to himself. And he said, I will ascend into the heavens. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. He turned the song and it was anointed. That's why he's mentioned in Ezekiel 28 as the anointed cherub that covereth. He was anointed. And he turned the song of man into a song of an angel. And when he began to sing the song, he started trying to turn an angelic creature into a human being. And the earth couldn't stand the strain. It couldn't happen. And when that hybrid seed was sown into the earth, because some of these words are flesh, flesh pots, flesh covered crimson. He was saying he would be flesh covered crimson or he would create flesh covered crimson. He was sowing a seed, a hybrid seed. And Jesus said in Matthew 13 that angels are reapers. So he was going to sow a seed that he could reap. Can you see it? Am I too deep? Is everybody with me today? Are you listening? If you're with me, let me know. So, so I'm, I'm hearing it. I'm hearing it. See, what's happening is, is that this was what was going on. When it came time, he had, he had sang the song of the fruitful place. He had sang the song of the cities. He had sang the song of all the, the birds in the heavens. He had sang the song, the beautiful song, preparing the earth for God's family. And then he saw the song of the man in the stones of fire. And he didn't sing it about the man. He didn't sing it about God's family. He sung it about himself. And when he did, Jeremiah 4, well, first of all, we'll read verse 15. The pronouncement, the harvest, God in his system of harvest, all capitals, Lord, Yahweh, pronounced the judgment. And he said immediately, Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. And then verse 16, watch this now. Speaking of the seed of the serpent that would come. Watch what he said. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man? that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms. Here the seed had been sown. Harvest had been pronounced. That when the day comes, when it shows up, that, the, that it will, when the man 
that he sowed for that day finally shows up. We know him as the Antichrist. When he finally shows up, he said, then the earth will say when he's draw, drugged down, is this the man that shook the kingdoms? Is this him? Hallelujah. I don't know if anybody's getting this or not. Maybe I'm too heavy today on location. What? Well, watch this in Jeremiah 4. So when that happened, verse 24, Jeremiah says, I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and all the hills moved lightly. And I beheld, and lo, there was no man. This all happened before the man. And all the birds of the heavens were fled. I beheld, and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness, and all the cities there were broken down at the presence of Yahweh and by his fierce anger. This was the harvest he got for singing the wrong song and sowing the hybrid seed. Man, I don't know. I don't know how powerful that is to you. Somebody give me a thumbs up on the chat as the partners with me on this. See, this is not so wild. I'm about to show you how this thing has followed through. And so you can see where we are. So he says, for this shall the earth mourn and the heavens above be black because I have spoken it. I have purposed it. Well, back up to verse 27 in Jeremiah 4. For thus hath the Lord said, the whole land shall be desolate, yet will I not make a full end. For this shall the earth mourn and the heavens be black because I have spoken it. I have purposed it and will not repent, neither will I turn back from it. And so the first world before Adam imploded but the scripture says this now we go back to genesis 1 and i want you to see this in genesis 1 in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth that's what we were just talking about the beautiful because isaiah 40 declares that god did not create it without form and void he didn't create it in vain Isaiah 40 declares he created it to be inhabited. You hear what I just said? To be inhabited. He created it for the man to come. And Lucifer did what he did. He was a murderer, Jesus said, from the beginning. Now, and the earth, verse 2, and the earth was, but that word was is the word became. And the earth became without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the abyss, or the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. But that word waters there means death-filled, ignorant death-filled, semen-filled waters. Or in other words, seed-filled waters. And so then when God started saying in verse three, God said, let there be light. And there was light. He's recreating everything. It's just like this. Then he told Adam, watch what he told Adam in Genesis 1, uh, 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over the earth, all the earth, over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And he says this, so God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him. This is after the recreation. Created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. Watch this next line, and subdue it. Subdue it. But wait a minute. It's perfect, isn't it? Then what is there to subdue? To have dominion and subdue, put it down. What is he talking about? Because as soon as the light hit the earth again, as soon as it all hit the earth, then every seed laying in those dormant waters would start coming up. And the seeds of that Lucifer sowed would begin to come up again. So you know it's the recreation because the sun, moon, and stars began to give their light. They wasn't created there, so they just started giving their light again. Everything had went dark. 
And so when, when the waters abated, they didn't abate here. They were rebuked in Psalm 104. In Noah's day, they'd slowly abated. But in this day, in Psalm 104, it said when God renewed the face of the earth, he rebuked the waters and they went back up into the streams and everywhere they should be. That's what's happening here. And so when this happens, he said, remember, when those told the man, when that those seeds start coming up of rebellion, you put it down. You put it down. Now think about it. So Adam failed to put it down. He didn't put it down. Watch this. So then it th starts talking about this. In Genesis 3, it says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. God didn't say you couldn't touch it. He just said, Don't eat of it. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. It's an outright lie. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. In other words, you'll be woke. You'll be woke. Wait a minute. I thought that was just a phrase for today. No, no, no. It began right here. Woke. Your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her. And he did eat. And the eyes of them both were woke, were opened, and they knew they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. They began at that point to try to meet their own need without God. Can you you got to see this. So you have to ask yourself, see, the scripture says in the New Testament that the woman was deceived, but the man was not deceived. So Adam was not deceived. He committed high treason. Now we have to ask ourselves some things in a treasonous affair which you can find in the story of the good Samaritan with the Samaritan, the good Samaritan, uh, the, the man was going from Jerusalem to Jericho that the good Samaritan had to rescue. He fell among thieves. He lighted among them. He joined them and they stripped him, wounded him, left him half dead. Adam was left knowing good and evil. And they took his garments from him. Notice in that story, they didn't take his money. They took his raiment. They wanted the glory that covered the man. They wanted his authority. It's actually the story of Adam. And it carries all the way through to the coming of the Lord. Now, we won't get into that, but I want you to see this. So here he is. He cannot be deceived. So he committed treason. Now we see the serpent involved. We see uh, Satan couldn't get in that garden, but that serpent could. A serpent could. Now you have to ask yourself a question. In a treasonous coup, there's always something everybody wants to be tempted to do. What was it? We can only speculate about what Adam could have wanted to commit such treason. People just think, well, he just gave in to his wife. Well, there, there's probably a lot more to it than that. Because he was going down to Jericho in that story, which Jericho means the moon, and the moon is where the Jews taught that Satan's throne set on. They're talking about on that mountain. That's why Joshua had to take it first. This is a big thing going on, and we're all in, involved in this, this end time scenario. And so he comes down here, Adam, what did he want? Why did he commit treason? What was he after? I don't know. But he must have been going down to the moon to put down Satan's reign 
and put down all the seeds he had sown, and he joined these thieves. Now, what did Satan want? Well, we all we know what he wanted. He wanted to be like the Most High. He wanted possession of the earth. He wanted man's position. He wanted everything man could be. But to try to turn an angel into a man brought about a worldwide catastrophic flood. Amen. And so it disrupted everything from the spirit world to the natural frequencies, sounds, everything. It disrupted it all and imploded the earth. But he still wanted that. And that seed was still floating. So it was settled. It has to come up at some point. So what did, what did Satan offer that serpent? See, people think, well, the serpent was just used. He was just used. And so, you know, he was just a pawn possessed by the devil. No, he wasn't. No, no. The Bible was plain to say in the very first verse of chapter three in Genesis, he was more cunning. He was more cunning. The serpent himself had cunning about him. So he had a plan and he could decide something. So what could he be offered to go into the garden? Because Satan couldn't get in the garden. But what could he be offered to go into the garden and cause the fall of man? See, the serpent was the first Adam's Judas. The way Judas was, was the last Adam's Judas. He was his betrayer. So what could he have been offered? And if you want to know something that's really, really something about this to show you its own track. The first serpent was a beast of the field outside the garden. Judas wasn't a, a Jew. He wasn't an authentic Jew. He came from the Moabite side of the Jordan. He came from the other side. So he was a beast of the field outside the garden. He was a stranger. That's why they buried him in a field for strangers, the field called a seldoma, the field for strangers. So him and the serpent are the parallels. So why, what could the serpent have been offered to cause the overthrow of man? He was offered. The Lord himself revealed it in the prophecy. The seed, your seed, he told the serpent. If the serpent had have just been deceived and used, the Lord would have never told him. You get a harvest for that. He decided. So what could he have been offered? Very simply, I will put enmity between thee, the Lord talking to the serpent, and the woman between your seed and her seed. He was offered the position of bringing in the Antichrist, letting it be part of his seed. He was offered that position. He was given that opportunity and he took it. And that's what happened. That's what happened. And you find after that, that it says when, fallen angels, sons of God, saw the daughters of men, they began to experiment. And if you read it in Hebrew meanings, you could see it. They began scientific experimentation to mutate and, and uh, do some kind of hybrid beings. And the seed was in the earth for it to happen. And the Lord said, your seed will get put down by her seed. And we see all these giants being formed. We see all the seed of the serpent, all the seed of the serpent. Now we've got an idea of what kind of uh, drugs and things they may have used to mutate humans in those days. Nimrod, the Bible said, began to be a gibberim. He began to be a giant. He began to do these things. Now we know probably where a lot of these creatures came from, trying to get to a super race. Hitler tried that, trying to create a hybrid race of people. 
And it's never changed. And now we're finding out that certain uh, of this uh, illness, I'll say, that's been perpetrated through the earth has the same components as serpent venom. Isn't it amazing? And it was amazing when I saw Biden hiss, lean over and hiss and talk in whispers. When I took a picture of him up close, his eye was golden looking brown and slotted like a snake. Some of you saw it. And we wonder what's happening. See, it's hard for civilized men to believe that all of this is, is, surely this is not happening. Surely this is just fairy tales. Surely this is not really a going on right now. Surely this is too far out to be happening. Really? Really? What about Baal worship? What about Baal worship from the very beginning? Baal worship happened after Cain killed Abel. That's when it really began to be lodged in the earth. And it's always been a fight between God and Baal through the Old Testament. It's always that. When the children of Israel crossed the Red Sea, the last fight they fought was over. God called out Baal Zephon, the God of the north wind, to come out. He crossed. He came across, Habakkuk says, right down uh, from, from Teman, that er er region, and came across to the children of Israel and went right by Baal Zephon, the high place where Baal received children's blood and they offered children. It's always been a fight. Why do you think in 1973 uh, and so forth, when they begin to legalize the murder and the slaughter of the unborn? And why does Satanists take advantage of that and walk in and, and have rituals while they're offering children? Why did that all take? How come that it's the number one issue with the Democrat Party? How come it's always been the number one issue with them? How come? And why, when Hillary Clinton panicked, when she was running against uh, 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 Jehu, I'll say, because they're looking for trigger words to cut this off. How come when, when she was running against him and they were doing their debate, she just panicked and said, you can't vote for him. He'll, he'll stop Roe v. Wade. Well, it stopped, didn't it? Well, why did she panic? I heard a, a newscaster asked another one on the news said, why do, is the Democrat Party so obsessed with abortion? This is his response. He don't know. Nobody else knows. But why is it so important to slaughter 40 million unborn a year worldwide? Why is that the big thing? Why is their body parts sold? Why is experiments done with uh, different parts of them? Why? Why did Hitler do experiments the way he did? Trying to create a super race? Uh-oh. And now why is the components of a perpetrated, fabricated something that went through the earth? Why is it the same components now they're discovering as snake venom? Why? Why is all of that? You have to ask yourself, it's getting too real to be fake. It's getting too real to just be some kind of conspiracy. That seed was sown. And even the Lord himself said the serpent had a seed that was coming. But he said Jesus would put his seed down. But he hasn't gotten here yet. And the regimes have tried to put him, bring him forth, bring him forth, bring him forth. And now you know why he's called a, watch, beast. A beast. It's because he's not human completely. He's called a beast. Why did when Hillary Clinton ran for president, they brought out the Arch of Baal? Why blow up the temple of Baal in Palmyra, Syria, but save the arch until they could 3D print it, then destroy it? Why did they print a thousand of them? Why did they put them around? Why did they put them in? And why did, why did Boris Johnson dedicate one and demon spirits flew through it on camera, caught on camera? Why? Why did the, the president of Italy uh, our prime minister, whichever it was, dedicate one. Why are they showed? Did they show up everywhere? 
And all the Arch of Baal is about was they called it, the, it was called the Triumphal Arch, where they carried babies through it up to offer them in sacrifice. Why did that become the rallying cry? And you know what they called it? The Arch of Freedom. The Arch of Freedom. The Arch of Freedom. And what do you hear them scream about a woman's body? It's free. They should be free to do whatever they want to with their body. They are all referring to this. And you think I'm too far out. Nay. But this is a mystery that no, that people don't want to see. They don't want to look at. They don't want to look at. But our, our 11th hour team looks at it. Our 11th hour family around the world knows it's true. And you know in your spirit what I'm saying right now is true. And you see it start to advance. It advances. It advances. And now they're closer to bringing it to pass than ever before. CERN is involved in that big LHC in Switzerland, trying to open portals to let something come through. It almost came through this time, but they wasn't counting on uh, thousands upon thousands upon thousands of 11th hour warriors saying access denied. And it was after that storms hit everywhere. Did you notice that around the world they were hitting and the most hideous clouds with faces in those clouds were looking down at the earth. They came right up to the brink of crossing, but they couldn't get through. Access denied. Now, this is a spiritual war I'm talking about. Now, you know, I mean, we could get up and, and preach a lot of things. But on the 11th hour, we talk about more than just the obvious. We must talk about what's being planned. Now, I want to show you something. 